In this video, we will review 10 questions you may be asked on the instrument rating written exam or on the instrument check ride regarding instrument approach plates such as an ILS, RNAV GPS approach or localizer approach. Pilots interviewing for an airline job may be asked to brief and explain an instrument approach plate during the technical part of the airline interview. Now let's jump into the questions. The missed approach point of the DSMS localizer 3-1 procedure is located how far from the locator outer marker abbreviated LOM? We know the final approach fix and locator outer marker is at forum. See the bottom left side of the chart to see that the distance from the final approach fix to the missed approach point is 4.2 nautical miles. Another way to find this is to add the distances from the missed approach point to inner marker, middle marker, and outer marker. 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.5 plus 3.2 equals 4.2 nautical miles. The correct answer is A. Question 2 asks. You were coming down on the ILS 36 at Oshkosh slash Whitman Regional and had to execute the missed approach. ATC advises you to fly the published mist. What course should you intercept to the missed approach holding waypoint? See the missed approach procedure in the top right of this ILS approach chart. The missed approach calls for a climb to 1,300 feet then a climbing right turn to 3,000 on the 111 degree radial of the Oshkosh door as shown. The correct answer is A. During the ILS slash localizer approach to runway 13 left at Love Field in Dallas, the minimum altitude for glide slope interception is. The glide slope interception is at the outer marker of NIDER, which is 4.2 nautical miles from the missed approach point. See the number 1900 which is underlined in the chart. This is the minimum altitude for the glide slope interception, so the correct answer is B, 1900 feet. What indication should you get when it is time to turn inbound while in the procedure turn at FAVBU? The outbound course for the procedure turn at FAVBU is 004 and the inbound course is 184 as shown. A pilot would be 4 nautical miles from FAVBU when it is time to turn inbound on the procedure turn as shown in the chart by the arrow. The correct answer is B. Find the difference between the airport elevation and the threshold elevation at Arlington Municipal Airport. The box highlighted in the upper left of this ILS approach plate shows the runway length of 6,080 feet, the threshold elevation of 597 feet and the airport elevation of 628 feet. Since the question is asking us to find the difference between the airport elevation and threshold elevation subtract the threshold elevation of 597 feet from the airport elevation of 628 feet to find the difference of 31 feet. The correct answer is A. What is the purpose of the 11,400 MSA on the Grand Junction Regional Approach Chart? See the minimum safe altitude radius on the left of the chart with the number 11,400. According to Chapter 1 of the Instrument Flying Handbook and Chapter 5 of the Aeronautical Information Manual, MSAs, which stands for Minimum Safe Altitudes, are expressed in feet above mean sea level and normally have a 25 nautical mile radius. They provide 1,000 feet of clearance over all obstructions in a designated sector, but do not necessarily assure acceptable navigation signal coverage. The correct answer is C. When conducting the ILS-localizer approach to runway 10 right at Portland International Airport, what is the minimum safe altitude while maneuvering between the BTG Vortac and SCAPO intersection? Suppose our aircraft was flying somewhere near the orange star in the chart since the question is assuming we are maneuvering somewhere between the BTG Vortac and the SCAPO intersection. If we were flying on the 250-degree radial of the BTG Vortac and turned the OBS knob on our HSI or CDI to a heading of 250, the TO from indicator would show a from indication and we would be flying to the west of the BTG Vortac as illustrated in the minimum safe altitude radius near the bottom of the chart. Therefore, the minimum safe altitude and correct answer to this question would be a, 3,500 feet above mean sea level. What is the MDA and visibility criteria respectively on the LNAV approach procedure for categories A and B type aircraft? 
In the bottom of the chart, we can see the landing minimums for the LNAV and circling approaches on the RENAV GPS approach for category A and B aircraft. The minimum descent altitude is 1,240 feet MSL and the minimum visibility requirement is 1 statute mile. The correct answer is A. How can an initial approach fix, abbreviated IAF, be identified on a standard instrument approach procedure chart? According to Chapter 1 of the Instrument Flying Handbook, all initial approach fixes on a standard instrument approach procedure chart will be labeled as such. The correct answer to question 9 is C. What determines the missed approach point for the straight indoor slash DME runway 36 approach at PUC? As you can see in the chart on this VOR slash DME approach, the missed approach point is illustrated by the dashed arrow that is ascending up and to the right and it is at the carbon PUC VOR slash DME. The visual descent point is illustrated at 1.4 DME from the VOR but is not the missed approach point so answer B would not be correct. Answer C would not be correct because the 164 degree radial is part of the missed approach procedure and not the missed approach point. The correct answer is A. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more flight training and aviation related educational videos.